Okay, it's been a while since I've done one of these, and um, I thought I might take time out to uh, kind of talk about, once again, crashes. Um, you can see I'm having crashes here. I'll talk about them, um, what I think they are, possible debugging steps to help try to figure out why my game or other games might crash, um, and see if that kind of helps others um, in, in that same kind of process. Um, you got to kind of forgive me, I <clears throat> just woke up. Um, I got like one, one thing of coffee down, so I'm, I'm still about half asleep. Um, but I kind of enjoy uh, doing things, I always do things unscripted. Um, I like to kind of think on the fly, um, because that's generally how uh, uh, any, any, you know, just a regular person would think. Uh, they wouldn't have access to all these debugging tools. They wouldn't be a master level, assembly level, you know, level programmer. They just have basic tools. And I think we can figure this out possibly with basic tools. Um, and that's going to work under the assumption that generally um, a mod that is posted would work. Um, I know there's bugs in it. I know there's conditions that might not be accounted for or other mods that the mod author might not take into consideration when they make their mod. Um, so all those things are possibilities, but generally I don't think uh, the, average use, the average author, the mod author, programmer, would post something that wouldn't work. That, that generally wouldn't work. So I'm going to go under the impression that it works at least to their expectation. It may not be fully tested. Uh, all permutations may not be... I'm um, getting ready to get catnapped here. I don't know why this... I don't know why this thing just loves it when I talk. Um, they may not have tested every single permutation. Um, so... Therefore, it may not be a hundred percent, you know, solid. But uh, I'm going to work under the impression that it does work. Okay. So that being said, um, I know there's a lot of bug reports coming in um, with some settlements. I know Chapter Three. There's a a lot of new code there. There's a lot of new integrated code. Um, this might help with some of that, um, so let's just go ahead and, and jump right in. Okay, so to start out with, let's go back and take a look. Um, I'm going to need some idea. Let's start with some just basic stuff. Is the problem getting better, or is it getting worse? Um, and if you take a look at the load order history here, you can see a history of all the load orders from the most recent. This is the one I'm currently playing to the oldest one of the first ones this is when I was this I have some that are older than these uh, but I'm actually developing these libraries that generate all of the little screens and forms and reports you see here on my desktop so some of the load orders are not going to be accounted for in fact some of the log sessions are not going to be accounted for. Um, there were bugs that I that somehow I didn't log it, uh, so it's not going to be 100% accurate, but it's going to be close. It's going to be in the ballpark. Okay, so if you take a look here, um, we started out at about 79% stability. And stability is basically based on the number of times you played and the number of times you crashed. So if you played it twice and you crashed once, you have 50% stability. Um, it doesn't really care or take into consideration, at least not at this point. I don't think it's really important the cause of the crash, just the fact that the game crashed. Now, there could be lockups that do not um, generate a system event or even a, a buff out event where buff out can pick it up, and that would be considered also a crash. Now, there are a few of those scattered in there. Um, so the numbers could be, you know, it's, it's an approximate number, so we're going to give it like a 1% to 3% variance. 3% is excessive, but it, 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 it doesn't hurt. Okay, so if you take a look, uh, we started out about 79%. We started going up to about 100. Um, and then 
we got here to where we're about 91, 88, and then it started going back down again. Um, so we're back down to about 71%, and 71% is my current load order here. And you can see there the little red indicators, there's errors, and we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, I'm going to leave this up because I'm going to need this. Um, let's go back to... Um, let's go back here to about 88%. Okay, let's do a load order history and let's go back. So let's take a look at the type of errors I was having. Um, you can see there were quite a few, and especially here where it was like boom, boom, boom. Um, I leave all the buff out logs in a certain folder so I can go back and analyze uh, statistically what might be the problem. Um, let's see if anything pops up here right off the bat. Okay, I don't really see much of anything right off the bat. And I'm going to have to go back and match some of these addresses here to some of these DLLs and see if that's going to be, um, going to be, uh, help me actually link some of this together. But again, let's take a look at this as though the average user with average data. Um, I know, I know you might say, well, you, a person might look at this and say, well, you've got a lot of extra data here. That's true, but none of this data is acquired with some kind of hidden means. It's basically taking a look at readily available information and looking for certain pieces of information in other information, such as a papyrus log. Okay? Um, so it's all should be there, and this should be, be you know, a, a person should be able to apply this across the board. Okay, so let's um, let's do this. Let's just mark all those off, and let's mark this one. So this one we're looking at now. So you can see that um, the type of errors I was having, like virtual machine, virtual machine, and now somehow, from what I understand, that's where the VM desyncs. Um, we can take a look at the buff out log, um, and we can see the last thing on the stack. Um, it looks like an armor object. Um, I'm not familiar with form types um, here in form IDs, but I do need to look this up and get a map of this, and I, I might be able to remap this file so it would say like armor or something. But it looks like it's the postman's mailbag. Um, but I don't believe that necessarily is... This is the last thing on the stack, but I don't know if that necessarily is what caused it, and I'll tell you why. Um, let's say that you have a, a, an F4SE function that grabs every object in a cell. And you have multiple scripts running. And I know how wonderful it is. A person goes, oh my god, I can grab every object in a cell. I can now look for dead bodies. I can highlight dead bodies, unhighlight them. I can even look at their inventory of a dead body because now I have the reference of that dead body. And I can see if, it, is there nothing in it? Then I'm not going to, I'm going to highlight it a darker color. Um, so you can have like an orange body for unlooted and a purple body, dark purple if it's been looted. Um, things like that. But <clears throat> I don't think what the scripts take into consideration is some of those objects may have changed or no longer exist. So for example, in let's say Sim Settlement 2, I had the biggest problem with loose file streams in Abernathy and Concord, especially Concord. Never had that problem. It never cropped up until Concord added a bunch of like sandbags and ladders, and it became uh, I forget what he called it. It's not coming to mind right now, but it's when Concord gets re inhabited, you know. Uh, but it's later on in the Sim Settlement 2 quest. So something, some script was scanning the area looking for things, and perhaps in the process it created a list of, let's say, um, objects in that cell. But, because you moved into that cell, Sim Settlements 2 now begins to remove those objects and upgrade to a new plot. So those objects no longer exist. Now remember, this is random. So when this randomly occurs, if you have a reference that was deleted because it's going to be replaced with a level 2 object or a level 2 plot, but another script still has that object, the original object, in its list because it doesn't know it's deleted because they don't talk, it doesn't talk to another script. If he doesn't check to see if that object is even valid or if somehow 
you have embedded data and embedded data structures that point to different memory locations and somehow one of those embedded data structures was shared and then got deleted then uh, when it tries to reference it in, an, in, in the second object it doesn't exist and as it's go as the, as the game engine is going down through those embedded structures I couldn't find this it's loose it's missing it, it wasn't closed um, and it would be the same thing is uh, you know if the object was it was deleted because it's upgraded it's being it's being removed it's upgraded and, the, and another script says oh just finally got to that first object tries to use it blam you got an error because it's calling some kind of papyrus function or calling some kind of function that's looking at data structures and it's returning an error so those are possibilities um, okay so okay now back to this um, so I've got virtual machine here um, I don't really see anything in here like I don't I don't know how to read this like um, except for something like this see where it says base objects do not match um, I'm gonna bring up uh, let's see if I made any changes let's just take a look here um, let's see okay so I made some changes um, I added wells, so and then I updated the Rob Copatcher. Now Rob Copatcher is supposed to patch things before the game actually starts. Now I don't think that means before the game launches. I think when the game, I think there's a couple things going on, and it's some of the issues I'm having currently. I believe when the game launches, it loads all the relevant DLLs, not Fallout Script Extender, but I'm talking about just like, for example, it will try to load the um, DirectX appy, which happens to be Reshade. So it, lo it begins loading these DLLs. So Reshade is now compiling its, its stuff. It's, it's not necessarily, I don't think it's necessarily looking at a load order yet because it, it might uh, just to get a little bit of a, a jump on what what with what you know like if you're gonna get into your game it might try to load things a little bit early but I don't think it would because um, but now that I think about it I believe it does because if you're missing a master I believe it crashes right off the bat without even getting to the loading screen um, so that being said if that's the case the Robco DLL is also doing its thing before it even gets into the game. So if you were to look at it, um, hopefully this will work. Let's see. I haven't done this in a while. So let's see here. Let's get up. Uh, let's get gain. Not that. I don't want that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's definitely too early. Let's kill that. We don't want that. All right. So let's get this. All right. So, let's see if we can figure out what we're doing here. Um, let's do a new. Alright, alright, cool. Alright, so, we got a brush. It's good enough. Alright, alright, let's see what we got. Okay, so, let's say that this, okay, is the game, right? This is the game. And this is our timeline, right? So we're just going to put timeline up here, right? This is our timeline. So let's say this is where the game starts, right? This is where it starts. So this is where the code first starts executing. It's going to try and open, right? It's going to try and open uh, a, a DirectX. We're just going to call it DX appy and it could be like dxgi or dx9 it's going to try to open this because this is what's going to do all of the graphics for the screen right but this actually points to reshade this is actually a reshade dll which then points to the real dx whatever so it compiles the shaders it points to the real dx now this has to go back in to the game okay so this is kind of a loop it's got a it's got to intercept the calls right and then pass on things to the actual real appy 
because this is really just a post-processing uh, shader. So it just does things to the, I'm going to assume it does it to the buffer, but I believe it would do it in line because I think if you try to access the buffer directly, that goes outside of the app because you're accessing hardware and you're going to be, you really going to have a mitigation issue there. So I believe it's going to do it in line. But also you have F4SE that also is firing off a bunch of DLLs. Okay? And such one of these DLLs is going to be the Rob Patcher. Now again, this is not looking um, this is not looking at uh, calls like this is like Rob Code's the cause of anything. But what I'm getting at is if F4SE launches in between this reshade part. So reshade is calling it it's it, it, it loads the appy, it's doing its compiling, but F4SE now starts doing its thing. Then it's going to try to potentially do certain functions that it's not quite ready for. Okay, or if the game continues to go forward during this process and it starts executing scripts before all of this is done then you're going to have you 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 might have a potential problem so things aren't initialized right uh the initialization didn't get done which is right around here somewhere you know all of this didn't get done and yet the game's still going forward as if it is so cuz when you program something you realize that even in multitasking, uh, multi-threading, it doesn't matter. The CPU is still only doing one thing at a time. You can have multiple threads that could, you could have multiple cores that could run independently, but they still have to access the bus sometimes to get to system memory. They have an internal cache, but it's only so big, and you have to load new data in that cache. Um, and we're not going to get into all that stuff, but like, um, but anyways, um, it's still only doing one thing at a time, but it's doing it very quickly. And then it's moving on to the next thing, the next thing, and it's doing it so fast and constantly switching that it gives the illusion that everything's running at the same time. So programmers learn that things need to be done sequentially because that's the process. You can't read a file unless you've opened it. Um, and if you try to read from a closed file, the reference is closed. There's no, there's no data that points to any type of buffering, a buffer, or any type of hardware register because it's closed. It's not going to like that because it's going to say you're trying to read something that no longer exists, and you're going to get a crash. So I'm wondering if when the game actually starts here, right? When this actually starts, if somehow things are they're happening in parallel when they should be happening sequentially so everything should wait until one thing is done one thing is done and it's going to slow down the loading process yes but it's going to make sure that um, everything is done cleanly and it doesn't go to the next thing unless the previous step it has completely finished okay so given that idea let's go back over here all right, so um, taking a look at, let's see, which one is this? Is this, uh, this is my new one here. Um, I believe this is, you know, this is the, I believe this is the one I was talking about. Okay, so you can see where, uh, this is the one that uh, I believe is the Lauren Michael one. I need to put like a title up here. All right, so you can see I added wells, and this adds... Um, workshop objects and then I have Rob Kopatcher now just because this crash happened after I added these two mods doesn't necessarily mean it was a fault of these two mods because if you go back to a previous load order you might see that some of these problems still existed so it could be an existing problem in the load order in the mod data in the actual way scripts are coded it could be any of that um, so, but we have to get some kind of feel or metric for it first to even know where to begin. 
um, because if you if you don't, it's it's like trying to build a house. You know, if you try to put the roof on and there's no walls, it's there's no way the roof's not gonna not gonna hold. You know, you have to get everything built up and you have to kind of shift around a, a, to different parts to kind of build it up as a whole, piece by piece. Okay. So you can see I still got a virtual machine, virtual machine. Um, I added visible galaxies. This this just simply added a I believe a mesh. This added a mesh. Um, this was probably an update. Um, one way to find out. Let's see. Let's go over to here. Um, yeah. See where it replaced the file here. So it replaced it. Replaced it. This was an update. This updated the Institute technology. This was an update to his mod. Now this is not always a good idea because it may change scripts. I think textures or meshes might be fine. Uh, material files might be fine. Um, but scripts, here's the problem with the script. <laughs> um, if you have five functions in your script and the mod author updates that and he changes, he removes one of those five and now you have four. Or if he modifies one with different variables. When the new script executes, it's not going to find the fifth function. So if it's currently running on the stack as a frame, if it's currently executing that particular script and it's looking at that frame, that frame no longer exists. Um, or the data is different and it's going to handle it different. So you can have bad data coming into a good script and the good script says, you know what, I'm going to assume the data is good, the data is bad, and I'm going to roll with it. And then all of a sudden you have uh, some type of corrupted data or a crash. Okay, so I updated SUP, um, open world. I don't really use that. That's going to need some major patching. I put it in there because in this particular game, I like to challenge myself, so I throw everything in here I think I could possibly want, and then I'll work from it from there. Not the best way to do it. Definitely uh, makes debugging longer, sometimes in, in some cases impossible. Um, but I like a challenge. Um, I don't like things easy, unfortunately. I, I, wish, I wish I did. Um... Okay, so let's, okay, so here's a uh, favorite, um, this is a menu thing, this probably was an update, we're going to take a look at this, yeah, see where it says replace file here, this is an update, and I could have reinstalled it, um, I was actually testing uh, the uninstall, manifest uninstall, and I had to take into consideration things were uh, installed over something else, and if the previous mod I'm, I'm actually uninstalling wasn't, it was overwritten. I don't want to remove those files, so I could have done this just, uh, you know, just for that reason. Okay, so we have replacement system. I'm not sure really why I put this in here because I don't really replace other NPCs with feral spawns. Now I did have to add munitions. Um, let's see, I had to add this because um, this was a replace. This might have been an update. Um, I did have to. I did have to add this because the Institute of Technology weapons, the overhaul. I think it's Institute of Technology overhaul ITO. It does require this. Um, there's better locational damage. I think I tracked down part of the problem to this. I'll explain that here, probably in a third video, because I don't want this going too long, because this is going to take a while. There's a lot of data to go through. Okay. Now here, I believe I had a previs crash. Um, let's take a look here. Let's bring this up. Let's go into, um, and I think it was because of this. When I seen this, because I had a lot of previs issues, things blanking in and out of existence depending on the angle you looked. Um, and I think part of the problem is the fact that Bethesda doesn't completely clear out memory because it doesn't. They don't want to reload data they've already loaded, even if it's bad or it's it's a weird reference. Um, you'll notice that, like I, I think I posted like a a picture of Ivy, I think it was Ivy, or an NPC sitting on a chair in the middle of a street where there was no chair because somehow, see, the way that works is um, it, there doesn't have to be a chair there. It just needs to know what the animation marker is. So if I walk over to this marker, I know exactly what animation to play. It's, just a, it's, a, it's a very quick and simple way to make it look like the... NPC has an actual behavior. You know, you walk over to a chair. What's a chair for? You sit down. But it's an animation marker to sit. Okay, so it knew the chair was there, 
so it knows the an the animation the, the the animation marker, not the chair, but the animation marker. If you put the animation marker in the middle of a street and you put the chair ten feet from it, the NPC is going to sit in an invisible chair in the middle of the street because it goes by the marker, not the chair. But it may pa I think it passed to the marker. I believe it passed to the marker, not the chair. But you can pass to an object as well. But anyways, that being said. The chair is actually 50 feet from, it's in a building. So somehow the game engine calculated the position of the marker wrong or it put the marker in the middle of the street. The way to do that when I see something like that would be to show invisible markers and uh, I haven't really looked at that but that would, that would show whether it's the marker in the street or whether it is the calculation came up with some kind of weird value. It's an offset value is what it is. So either the primary numbers are wrong or the offset calculation is wrong. So that goes to show you that there's something happening in the Bethesda code. There's something happening in there where, where it's occasionally calculating the wrong X, Y, Z position. For example, I can run near water. I'm not in the water. When you normally go in the water, you'll see this neat little water trail, these neat little ripples. But when I'm near the water, I can see the my water trail 20 feet from me there's nothing in the water but you can see the ripples as though it thinks I'm out in the water so there's definitely some kind of bug in there where it's losing the exact positional data of certain things all right so if that happens if that happens then what else could possibly happen that could corrupt or cause problems okay that being said um, it looks like, uh, I, I'm thinking, let me see here, um, let me get rid of this, let me get rid of this. Okay, so here is where I reinstalled, I think this was an update to lootable treasures perhaps. Um, you can see other things, but we're just going to, we're going to focus on the crash. I got a previous crash object, probably TES object. Um, plug-in text, um, this will, you'll see this pop up if I add or remove, uh, here in this case I removed this from the load order, um, and I put that in there so that if I change my load order, I can literally, I did it for two reasons, one, I can see what changes I made, and number two, um, sometimes my, I would accidentally go over here and, and uncheck something, and it would uncheck something else, and, um, you know, like for example, if I removed SS2, it might uncheck these, but, um, and I didn't want them unchecked because I unchecked the wrong one. So, and these don't hurt because anything that has an error is not copied out. I just leave it here so I can know this is a reference. So when I go to put SS2 back in, I'll know where I had it and uh, where it goes. Um, and plus these will automatically convert over to green because they're good. But anyways, uh, I needed to know um, what I unchecked because oftentimes I go to launch a game and it's like, oh my down here oh my uh sorter patch you know or you know my bash patch one of these two uh, was no longer active because i unchecked a mod that has this as a master right so if you look at the bat if you look at the um uh, plugin masters for this you'll see there's a lot Let's see there's a lot of them Right. And this probably, I believe, fake core is up here because I do have the. And this actually is interesting. This actually worked out pretty well for me. Um, I believe the masters are. So I'm going to give me that option, is it? I believe the masters are. Um, yeah, they're out of. Okay, so in this case, um, I'm looking at the record count. So if you go over here and take a look at the record count, it's got. Uh, 14, but I think it's got group records. I don't believe groups count as far as the ESL record count. Uh, there's, there's a total number of records, but it might not actually be records. It might be relinked records. Not really sure. Um, I'll worry about that later when I work on the when I work more on the ES, uh, the SX, the ESP and ESM library, um, which is over here. It's right around in here somewhere. Uh, when I when I start breaking when I start getting more into this library to break down things, I'll I'll worry about that. Right now, I just need to open it, get certain data, and that's what that's just all I need. Okay, so you can see there's a lot of plugin masters here. Now, if I remove if I uncheck any one of these, it's gonna it's gonna automatically uncheck anything that uses that as a master. So I'd launch a game and it'd be like complex sorter. You know, this complex sorter thing is like, you know, or bash patch or something. Um, 
And so I'd have to go in and recheck them. And then I couldn't recheck them because I had to figure out, okay, what's it missing? I have to go in and look at the masters here, plug in masters. Okay, what's showing up is it'll, it, it won't be checked off or to be like uh, is um, inactive. So which one is it? And so that's the reason I added that. Okay, so that being said, see, we still got virtual machine popping up, virtual machine. So something's getting out of sync. So I'm like, okay, this must be. Um, then I thought, okay, what if it's burst impact? I wonder, you know, this is where I, now this is where I'm going to the debugging. Could burst impact be the problem? Um, I actually got a crash here. You can take a look. It is an, uh, oh gosh, it's an, nothing says a null reference here. Let's take a look. Give me a second here. And let's do, yeah, okay. So this is a null reference, but what I was looking for was, um, I think it's an um, invalid address. I forget the, the term for it. Um, but you can see the, this, now this crash log information here, this comes from the system. This is event viewer information. All right, so um, during combat. Now, I noticed when I was having combat, I would get a crash. Well, I, sometimes I would shoot somebody. It didn't matter what the gun was. Sometimes a ghoul would come up and just jolly slap me upside the face. Um, there's some kind of flying bazooka leap or something. Well, you know, that, that definitely clock. That, they never even got to the clock part. I mean, it, it was like freeze frame. You know, it's like the Jay Giles band freeze frame. It just stops midair, and then, of course, you know, you have a crash. Um, so naturally, me being me, I still add a bunch of mods in the process. Um, again, a crash during combat. So now we have a repeatable crash. Um, I believe this was ghouls. I think I was fighting ghouls. So I kept thinking, okay, it's got to be a ghoul issue. There's a ghoul issue problem somewhere. And again, we have some pre-combined issues. Uh, virtual machine again. So we're still getting these kind of weird things. I see ghoul attack player. So this is, again, where he was doing one of those phantom leaps through the air and then froze you know, as, you know, just kind of froze, did one of those, you know, Shrek things where, you know, she's up in the air, uh, and then it crashed. So, um, of course, now I updated the UI. That's not going to cause a problem. And then I started getting a bazooka shot. I mean, just literally a Tommy gun shot of these things. Um, let's see what these are. Okay, so, see, now divide by zero. Now, what this was, when I started getting these, these are... Every single one of these were crashes divided by zero. Every single one of these were crashes when I tried to start the game. It would crash while when reshade come up, it would crash. It was somehow crashing in the initialization. I did up uh, reshade updates don't show here, so I did update reshade. Um, and I was getting these divide by zero crashes. Man, it was crazy. Like, I mean, it was just one right after another. And this is me just trying to get the game up to run. So I would start the game, screen would go black, reshade, compiling shaders would come up. Seconds later, there'd be a crash. And what I would try to do is change my resolution. Um, I would actually try to make it full screen. Uh, and full screen was the problem. For some reason, it didn't like full screen. I had to go to a windowed mode. And I was actually wanting to lower the res to 38 by 20 instead of 5280 across. So that way it would be more, it would drop the res down and give me a higher frame rate. But it kept giving me this. And I tried changing, this is me changing the any file, trying to start, no clue, I have no idea what this was. Okay, so in the process I still have some updates to apply. Um, I, get, I get another error coming up. Now again, this, again, this is like three load orders back. So let's see what pops up here. See, virtual machine. So again, we're getting some weird thing, some desync on. So something weird is happening. Um, don't know what it is, don't know why. Okay, um, I don't know if I have Robco on here. Let's see if I can do this. Um, I do. So Robco is up here uh, somewhere, I think. Yeah, right here. So... I do have Robco installed, um, and it is it is doing its thing, which I'm assuming it does it before it loads the game. Um, so again, I got a bazooka, I got a bunch of errors, 
this is an audio error. Now, what this was, what this turned out to be, and I'm going to get to that. So I got a whole bunch of errors here. Don't have a clue what's going on. Can't get the game to load because I'm getting a crash at the beginning with the screen. Did update my, my AMD drivers. Uh, I don't have NVIDIA. I did update AMD. Um, and now I'm getting an audio crash. I'm like, okay, what the heck is that? What's going on with that? So we definitely have some kind of really serious destabilization because I'm getting errors all over the map. Now these could be related. They may not be. Um, so now I'm getting, now here's an audio crash. All right. Um, I've got another crash here that, uh, is a, that I have buff out information on. So let's see what we have. All right. Then I'm not sure about this because see this has like a banner thing. Um, and that's about it. It's got a UI message, so this might be a UI problem. Okay. Um, and it could be something I updated. Um, I added, I think I added these. Uh, let's see, yeah, copy file. So anytime you see copy file, that's an initial install. So these were just installed. So I just installed these. Um, and you can see where I installed a whole bunch of stuff. These are probably updates. Fate is... A clean and that's the new install. Robco is update. Nordic, these are updates. Buff out for update. Update to your face. Um, I wind up having to take this one out. Um, that was a new install. Um, it's a copy file. Let's see where it copies the, the DLL. Um, a replace is usually if it replaces an existing file or if it replaces them all. I actually, I actually updated it or just simply reinstalled the same thing over again. Um, and I, I would do that in case I thought maybe one of the files got overwritten. Um, just double check. So here I've got another one of these invalid references popping up. We've got more buff out four crashes popping up. Um, so just to show you how kind of out of hand this thing started to get. Again, you got a UI message. Uh, we're back on the texture. See, back to the banners, last thing on the stack. Um, so... This is a while back. Okay, so finally I'm thinking, okay, you know what? I've made so many changes. Grab and eat. I actually replaced some mods with another. Um, I forget what it was called, but it's where you can pick up things and eat them right on the spot. I, I changed that, which means I had to add the Lighthouse Papyrus in order to use Grab and Eat. And then um, I think this is where I was... When you see something like this, I was actually doing a test to make sure the manifest reflected the proper change. So it's probably like going to be like an install, maybe. Um, let's see. Can I... Is this going to work? Yeah, see? So this is probably the install, and then you can see where I did it again. Replace. So this is probably where I was checking the manifest out. Because um, I had some weird thing where it, it would, like, constantly load and not stop, but it was more of an animation issue. Like, little loading icons. Those are like... That's an, that's an animation you can attach to... Uh, a thread and I gave it the wrong animation name or actually I didn't tell it there was an animation name or no it was the wrong animation name is what it was so it kept playing the animation even though the thread was done okay so and then you take a look here at um, see there's where I added it so you can see I had a plug in text change and you can actually see where I did a plus I added that um, and then I, I think I took these out and then I regenerated the sorter patch. I'm not sure why this came out, but then I regenerated the sorter patch. That's where that came from. That's what this is, where I thought, okay, you know what? I'm gonna regenerate everything, so I manually took all this stuff out. Um, I'm not sure why the object count and all that did it, but usually it's bas bashed patch, complex sorter, uh, the, the patch patch. Take and equip, that's the old one. That's the one that grab and eat replace. So I took that one out permanently. And then I generated the patches, and then, of course, you can see I put them all back in. So that's what all that is. But we still had a crash. So let's clear that one out. Let's go to this one. And I know this is a pain in the tail to go through, but I kind of feel it's important because you can see all the crashes. A lot of people are having the crashes. This is a pretty, 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 pretty heavily modded load order. Um, I've got, uh, let's see, about... 423 plugins in here. Uh, 226 are regular. That leaves the other 200 something uh, to be light plugins. Um, and if you look at the available, I've got. Let me see here. There we 
increase in available is not what we're looking for. We have about 682 mods uh, actually installed. So, uh, and that could be texture mods, but about 682 mods installed, and you got about coming up on 450, 460 plugins. So it's fairly modded. Um, and that doesn't include all of these injected DLLs. But um, that being said, um, I think, let's see. See, I had to disable to your face because that actually wound up being one of the sources of the crashes. because so there's many different sources of the crash. And uh, it's what I'm going to get to next. So I'm going to stop this video and then I'm going to pick it up with the next load order. And that way this thing won't be like 50 hours long.